would authenticate to the network, the rogue device could then piggyback off of the existing connection. There were a few problems. Um, and interestingly enough, when I was researching who to give credit to for this particular attack, there were a couple of names that came up. Uh, one was a gentleman from Microsoft who posted on their TechNet blog, but there was another guy that I saw um, that actually was dated about a year earlier, so I don't know who actually gets credit, so I put both of them at the end uh, in my links section. Anyway, the problem with having two devices on the network that uh, respond to the same information, uh, you can really only use UDP because TCP causes a race condition. If the rogue device sends out a TCP SYN packet, a SYN ACK comes back, well, a legitimate device, if it sees a SYN ACK packet, because a hub will broadcast to every port on the, on the hub, it'll respond with a reset ACK. Well, your rogue device will respond with an ACK. So it's a race, whose packet will get to where it's going first, and even then, the whole time, it'll be causing problems. So um, best thing to do is improve on the existing classics. Uh, nobody ever really has any new ideas anymore. It's all improving on existing things. So you can't really go to the store and buy a hub anymore. That really does make it kind of hard to do the uh, classic attack. Or if you do go buy something that they claim is a hub, it's actually a switch, and hub was cheaper to print on the label. Yeah, less letters, exactly. Plus, they get to use the H and, and B, which are not that common. Makes them feel better. Uh, we want to be able to use TCP, or for that matter, anything. And uh, if you have all sorts of weird traffic going on on the network, such as having a rogue device or two devices responding to the same types of traffic, um, that can cause, that can raise some flags if you're, if you're paying attention, that sort of thing. So, um, my demo configuration is mostly virtual. I've got a uh, server subnet that has a uh, radius box, a uh, domain controller, and a WSUS server. Um, it's separated out by a firewall. The firewall has a connection to the switch. The uh, switch also has a connection to a Windows 7 virtual client. So once I get everything hooked up, the uh, Windows 7 client will authenticate to the Radius server. The uh, switch will let it go hot, and uh, away we go. So, uh, what's a bridge? A uh, bridge is a network uh, device that connects multiple segments at the uh, layer two. Uh, there's an IEEE standard, and a switch is essentially a special kind of bridge in that it has uh, multiple ports. So to use a bridge in Linux, uh, there is a kernel module. Uh, it's integrated into the 2.6 series, but it's also available, I believe, for the 2.4 as well. Uh, standard in most distributions. Uh, there's some user land utilities that you use to configure a bridge. And uh, they're available almost everywhere. Um, although they may not be installed by default, you'd probably have to go install them yourself. So setting up a bridge is fairly straightforward. Uh, you create the bridge interface. In this case, I use BR0. You add NICs to the uh, bridge interface. You bring everything up. Uh, one side, the other side, then the bridge interface. So what happens when you hook up an 802.1x connection with just a straight bridge in Linux? Yeah, not much. Well, yeah, couldn't be that easy, could it? Well, as it turns out, this, uh, the reason for it not working is because the traffic that ePol uses is supposed to be dropped per spec on the uh, 801D spec. So, per standard, 8021D uh, bridge standard, there's a series of 15 MAC addresses that if you see that traffic, you're not supposed to pass on the bridge. All right, well, this seems, doesn't seem like rocket science. We pass it, it all works. So, uh, back out the, the patch, and uh, away we go. Well, 
Unfortunately, the bridge code has uh, seen a fair amount of maturity over the past few years, so simply backing out the patch from four years ago doesn't really work. But uh, fortunately, there's a gentleman, Ab, at Gremwell Security who uh, figured it out. Uh, he wrote a tool called Marvin that is a Java-based tool that is used to inject traffic onto a network using 802.1x wired. Um, so he figured out what you needed to do. It's written in Java. It requires three network ports, a source, a destination, and an injection, and allows you to manually uh, jack with the traffic going across the wire. Uh, it does require manual setting of MACs and IPs on all sides, so it's not something you can just drop and walk away from. It requires a fair amount of setup. It's an interesting little tool. Uh, depending on what you're doing, it might be worth looking at. But the, uh, his patch basically commented out the new uh, 2.6 code that uh, uh, drops the EPAL traffic, and now we can pass EPAL on the bridge. So uh, it's pretty easy to get the transparent configuration going. Uh, just set up some environmental variables to make life easier, enable IP forwarding, uh, create the bridge, uh, bring up the interfaces, and then using the uh, MII tool in Linux, we can actually reset the uh, link by forcing speed renegotiation. So it actually will physically drop the link and bring it back up so we can simulate disconnecting the cable remotely. So that's pretty cool. Um, let me get my VM set up here. Any questions about anything so far? Wow, are you guys still hung over or something? I was expecting a little more uh, boisterous audience or something. Somebody have a question? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Since the bridging by default is done at layer two, it doesn't know anything about what's going across the wire. So it just blindly forwards traffic from point A to point B. Yeah. Um, I dropped the link because that's the easiest way to force a reauthentication. Um, typically, you can, if you drop the link on the supplicant side, it will say, hey, I'm Bob, again. But the switch may or may not pick it up or be expecting it. You drop it on the switch side, the switch will say, who are you? So by switching it, by doing it on both sides, you just simulate the link going down, and it uh, forces the reauthentication. Correct. All right, get you going. Sorry about this. Uh, had a little bit of. Unfortunately, the switch I have takes like 10 minutes to boot from no power, so I had to get things rolling with the presentation before uh, was ready. Fortunately, you know, hooking up two cables, it's not that hard to do. Any other questions uh, while I'm getting this thing going?
Got one more VM to bring up and then uh, hopefully this will be all working. Praying to the demo gods. <laughs> yeah, they are. Actually, yesterday when I was setting up the, uh, the demo, I ended up separating the USB dongle from the USB portion on one of the four adapters I brought. I need three for the demonstration. That was a little stressful. Oops. Yeah, damn it. I'll get this switched over real quick. As soon as the window of the machine gets finished booting. All right. Where are we? Ah, uh, yes, invariably. I'll tell you what. There's really not a lot to see with the transparent demo. I plug it in, it works. Um, we'll get to the, uh, the pre-populated one, and uh, I'll get this thing figured out. One of the ports is uh, not behaving right, so i got to SSH into the switch and get that fixed. But anyway, it's uh, fairly straightforward. You plug it in, it works. Um, the interesting stuff is later on when you uh, interact with the device remotely. So anyway, uh, right now on the uh, device, the bridge looks like a piece of wire. You don't really see anything. Um, it passes traffic from point A to point B. The EPOL traffic goes across just fine. All the traffic from the client goes across uh, unmolested. And... Um, actually we'll do it that way. So, from a proof of concept point, we've introduced uh, 802.1x onto, or introduced a rogue access device onto a network that's secured by 802.1x. Now, this is kind of like the pet rock of uh, exploits here. You just demonstrated that it works, but it's not really a lot of fun to play with. So let's uh, see what we can do to, ah, crap, to fix that. All right. So uh, what do we need to actually make our uh, pet rock a little more fun to play with? Well, we need to, uh, first and foremost, not trip up any uh, additional security measures that are, that are in place. Um, we really don't want to... Uh, to cause uh, port security to get tripped because uh, typically port security violations don't automatically get reset. So it requires a human to come out and take a look or somebody calling and saying, hey, my computer doesn't work, what's going on? Um, so that's, that's not a good situation to have. Um, for uh, we also want to make sure that we're natting all of our traffic so that it looks like we're coming from the computer whose connection we're piggybacking.